All right, welcome to a stamping uh, show and tell featuring the National Stampographic issue number one, fall 1995, okay? Uh, volume 14. What does that mean? I'm not really sure. I'm guessing it's 14 years, but by the time of 1995, had it been really going for 14 years at that point in time? I guess so. Um, I know it was around in the 80s. Probably, it might have been more of a, like a zine incarnation or something like that. You know, maybe printed at home on a on a copy machine or something like that. I'm not really quite sure. By this point in time, they had gotten into you know kind of more of a uh, you know a glossy cardstock type of um, cover right here. It looks like they hand did. I'm sure this. Well, I'm not sure, but I doubt this was done at the printer, but I wouldn't be surprised if they added that little glitter by hand on each one of their covers, um, you know, back from the printer, because something like that would have cost a lot to have done at a printer. But anyways, 1995 is pretty close to the year that I started Stampscapes, okay? My first full year was 1994, but I was kind of selling stamps in 1993, so... Um, National Stampographics was one of the two or three um, publications that at the time dedicated to rubber stamping. Um, let's see, the Stampers Sampler and uh, the Rubber Stamper, those types of magazines came along not too long after that 1995, I'm guessing around the 96, 97. I don't know, at this point in time, I, I can't remember exactly, but there were, you know, the, the, the publications that were out there before I even got into stamping, when I started at a stamp of the hand, were, you know, National Stampographic, Rubber Stamp Madness, and uh, I thought there was one more, but I, it, it's, I, I don't know, I can't think of it right now. But let's take a look in this issue and see what it's about, see what it has in here in terms of articles, um, kind of announcements, and... Uh, maybe um, techniques or something like that, media, okay? So the single issue was $5 at the time. I'm guessing that most people that were stampers that, um, you know, were aware of these types of publications probably had um, subscriptions, okay? Because I don't know where you're going to find something like this if you're in certain areas and you're dependent on, uh, you know, pulling these off the shelf. Because at this point in time, um, there were quite a few stores starting to open, you know, but I mean, it was starting kind of on I don't know, a little bit more of the West Coast, you know, certain things in the Midwest, but certainly not the um, amount of stores, um, you know, that came to be like more towards the, uh, the late 90s, okay? But anyways, um, it's interesting because um, uh, National Stampographic, Okay, now here's what I'm reading right here. It says editorial email, uh, uh, mail, not email. So you used to saying email now, not mail. But it says New York here, but I thought um, National Stamper Graphic was based out of, yeah, it's tailored graphics out of Huntington Beach, okay? Now I just happened to live in Huntington Beach when I was going to school at Long Beach State. And when I started to stamp in the hand, they did an article on me. And I remember taking it just, you know, I don't know, a few uh, blocks away uh, to drop off my artwork for that um, article. So, um, yeah, they were just based right out of Southern California. And I seem to recall going in their house and seeing, like, stacks and stacks of, uh, you know, things like um, magazines. and You know, I guess it was boxes of the latest issue, you know, I seem to recall. Okay, but let's take a look at this right here. Um, Strawberry Farms. Stampberry Farms, okay. Um, this is probably a company here. Um, each of one of the different, each of the magazines kind of had a slightly different feel to it. Like, oh, Vamp Stamp News was another one kind of going at this point in time, I believe. Okay, that was more of like a zine or something like that. It was a real stampers stamp magazine. Not that all of them weren't, but um, some of them kind of were a little bit more focused in terms of uh, what they were bringing to you. You know, some of them were more focused on samples or examples or something like that, and some of them might be full of technique. 
Back in these days, you know, we were talking about to show uh, a technique, we're talking about a written kind of description of something, and maybe just a, you know, one black and white um, type of photograph or halftone on there, you know, or a couple of them maybe. And uh, I don't know, that's how we all kind of learned uh, the process of, uh, you know, doing certain types of things. Um, you know, no other way to kind of learn about it back then, except, you know, in workshops or something like that, maybe at a local store, or if you happen to have a convention in your given area, seeing demonstrations, um, live demonstrations at uh, those types of areas. Bartholomew's Inc. right here, I seem to recall that uh, uh, company, or at least the name of it, Stampendus, of course, that was a big one. Um, they're still around, I believe. Dee Grunig at Posh Impressions. Rest in peace, Dee. She passed away um, at the beginning of this year, but uh, Posh Impressions in here, Stampendus, both based out of uh, Southern California. Um, let's see, LA Stampworks, another LA company, okay. So, um, I believe National Stampographic used to have a booth at the Carson, Carson, California, not Carson, Nevada, um, stamp convention, and Carson was the big show anywhere, okay, in terms of, um, you know, rubber stamping, the, the art of rubber stamping, the medium, the, and the uh, kind of the industry of rubber stamping, you can say as well. You used to have a lot of wholesalers come into there, retailers, you know, and uh, kind of, you know, doing their shopping at that show just as though, um, just as they would later on, you know, they'd be doing that at CHA or something like that. But Carson was the place to go and get, um, I don't know, just information, sales, etc., on the art of rubber stamping. You know, the manufacturers would all be there. Okay, carving portraits right here. Eraser carvings, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. This is carving blocks. So I don't know if these are eraser carvings or something like a linoleum block cutting. But certainly the eraser carved type of um, uh, style um, was really big in rubber stamping. I don't see it anymore these days um, in terms of like new designs being offered by companies. But the eraser carved look was always a really big type of um, offering, I guess, in terms of uh, rubber stamping, especially in the 80s, late 80s, okay? Um, maybe not so much kind of in the 90s, but you see these articles still on the art of carving, okay? Uh, it goes on here uh, to more uh, carvings here, same article here. That font right there really looks like the stamp of the hand one. Maybe not, maybe not. Uh, the stamp of the hand one looks... And I, it reminds me of it, I guess, because it was hand-carved um, lettering. All right. Um, make your own glittery sticker sheets. What that means, I have no idea. Um, it looks like you make your own. Back then, if it didn't exist, um, kind of on the shelf, we were making it ourselves, okay? Sparkles right here. Another Laguna Niguel, again, Southern California. Uh, Museum of Modern Rubber, one of my favorite companies. I don't have their designs and stuff like that, but I love their whole kind of style and uh, kind of that retro, kind of 50-ish, you know, kind of look to their, um, their, to their line, to their booth, and uh, I don't know, it was really cool. Auntie Amy Stamps uh, in Riverside, she um, started putting on a show uh, in Riverside. I, was she the one that put on shows in other areas, other states as well? I, I think she did. I, I don't know. I'm starting to forget certain things, uh, you know, from, you know, back then. I don't know. It's It's been a long time. Um, here's the glitter sheets, um, article still going on. These are different types of things. Someone could demonstrate this in a video in probably five minutes or something like that, but you can see, you know, it starts here. You got to read, you got to read on here and uh, kind of gain, you know, what, uh, you know, the technique is from, you know, for the most part, written description, okay? These days, I don't know. I, I don't know how many, uh, 
how effective something like this would be with um, you know the uh, the video and uh, online types of uh, presentations that you can uh, you know see so readily and in mass quantities too you know any anything you want to look up or learn you can kind of look up these days okay moving on here let's see profile of a rubber necker does anyone remember rubber necker um stamps and that company especially at the conventions i believe they were the ones that uh I think they only did unmounted rubber, okay? Now, I worked for a stamp of the hand, and they were the ones that put on the Carson Convention. And Kathy didn't want just a booth, just of rubber dyes, okay? But that policy kind of changed over time when, you know, uh, rubber, just unmounted rubber, became much m more popular and uh, a popular incarnation to buy as opposed to buying wood-mounted stamps, okay? Clear stamps weren't around at that time. Uh, maybe in kind of like, like the custom-made stamps, I don't know, maybe some uh, custom rubber stamp places had poly, polymer uh, machines or something like that. But rubber stampers started buying um, a lot of rubber dies only, okay? And so you saw in the Rubbernecker booth, and other booths as well, but um, people started bringing mirrors to the conventions, little small pocket mirrors, so that they can look at the rubber die and see, you know, get a better idea of what that image is about, especially if it was a word stamp. You know, they, they read it right side, um, um, what, what are, you know, straight, as opposed to a reverse image of it, but... Um, yeah, Rubber Necker. Um, she sold, I think she moved to the United Kingdom. I don't know. Does anyone know about Rubber Necker? And uh, um, I think her, her name was Sue, I think, right? Sue Wilson, was that it? Or, yeah. Um, I don't know. She moved out there, and I think she did something with um, scrapbooking or something like that, or a magazine or publication or professional entity, I, I believe. I, I'm not sure, but that sounds familiar. Okay, so anyways, Rubber Necker... Uh, I think they were based out of uh, Southern Cal too. Yeah, Ontario, California. So a lot of the industry, you know, coming out of uh, the Southern California area. Uh, yeah, here's Rubbernecker, their um, ad here in the magazine, Ontario, California. Not Ontario, Canada, but Southern California. Jim Steffens, Rubber Art, Inc. Um California as well, okay. But he used to go to the different shows, too, I think. Oh, this is going on with Rubbernecker here. Stamp the Hand Company right here. There's an ad from uh, the company that I used to work for, and these are some of my old images right here. I don't have those re-released in uh, Stamscapes like um, some of my designs from there, but um, those are some of the early incarnations, not the... Houses of the snowmen, but the trees right here and that background hill. Looks like they have a little mountain back there as well and the um, snow pattern down there. So some of my early, you know, kind of er incarnations of uh, scenic stamping designs. All right, and let's see here. Uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, after all, this is kind of their Christmas issue right here. I take it. Um, let's see here. Uh, these are going into the different stores too. Um, some of you might recognize some of these stores right here. Uh, the Pambert Stamper Frames and Things in Stephen Point, Wisconsin. Calligraphy House in South Carolina. Stampland, Ohio. Uh, Stamp Edler Plus, I don't know, it goes on and on. Prairie Peddler, Solomon Seals, I remember them. A lot of these stores carried Stampscapes, okay? I mean, it's a small community, so if you have a store, you know, there's a certain number of manufacturers out there, so, um, you know, a lot of companies carried, you know, all the different manufacturers' designs, or some of them at least, so Impressive Impressions, GG Stamps and Stuff, Stamp By Me, Twin Oaks print and frame. I'm not sure if they carried her stuff or not. Maybe. Okay, so holiday gift ideas with color copying. Okay, color copying. That's kind of interesting. 
I guess you're using a color copier for something. I don't think they had... Did they have the home color copying units at the time? I don't think so. So we're probably talking about a color copying machine, like at a Kinko's or something like that, and putting together your pieces. And maybe uh, these ones have to be like collages or something like that, and probably doing color copying like that. Um, color copying became a really big thing with a stamp in the hand and their, the different types of mounts they used at the time. They had this little piece of paper that went underneath this little plastic um, um, wrap around um, top on their rubber stamps, you know, so they'd have a, um, a color coded, a color indexed uh, stamp. And so we were using a lot of color copies for that. But color copies, laser copies, um, became really quite accurate in terms of, uh, you know, the color accuracy. So um, I don't know. Maybe they were using something like that for that purpose right there. Um, let's see. How to make the hieroglyphic neck piece by Cleopatra Stein. Um the wonderful Egyptian stamps carved, okay, there goes your carving, by Julie Hagenblock. She was known for um, carving back in the day. But look at this right here. These are, um, it's like a necklace, okay. And it looks like they ran these through a laminator, okay, and made this little... I don't know, basically a jewelry piece like this. But um, this reminds me of things like uh, the um, shrink plastic, okay? Remember when that became big in rubber stamping? If you've been stamping for, you know, decades like me, um, then you, you, we've seen all these kind of things kind of come and go, um, uh, shrink plastic and whatnot. I don't remember too, too many people making um, jewelry and that type of thing, pins for, you know, for sure. But it's just kind of cool seeing things like that. I don't see people really making things like this anymore. I mean, stamping is really advanced. You know, you have cricket machines, scanning cuts, utilizing um, all kinds of dye things. You know what I mean? So something like this would be primitive kind of by comparison. But I don't know, just maybe if we people utilized um, those types of new technologies to make these types of things, I think it would be really cool to see again. Um, or even like something like, pins or something like that, wouldn't that be cool? But with the latest um, media and technology, I mean, we can, we'd probably see some pretty amazing things. Um, so it'd be kind of, you know, using a little bit of the past and present. Okay, holiday shopping guide here. Um, let's see. Posh impressions, stunning stamping techniques, you know, boy, posh impressions indeed, sure, certainly put out a lot of um, different things at every point in their kind of incarnation, but publications, you know, the hard copy type of thing, and later on when, um, you know, uh, people started doing videos and DVDs, they were right on top of um, doing that type of thing and putting, you know, that type of media out there. Um... Let's see. Um, what is this? Explosion cards. Okay. Um, is that is an explosion card one of those things? I think it's when you open it, it kind of pops out or something like that. And this is your basic instructions right there. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so, someone had to take a little pen and kind of illustrate all that. You know, someone from National uh, Stamper Graphic. Heirloom Productions. Okay, well, it looks like Heirloom Productions was kind of um, well on their way. Uh, I think my first convention was probably 1993 in Del Mar, California. And then I think I did Carson after that, okay? But, let's see here. Yeah, Del Mar, September 28th and 29th. Now, this is 19, you know, 95. So, this had been probably going on for two years at that point in time. I'm not really quite sure. Um, but I think it was uh, September of 95. 
three that I did this one. So, okay. So anyways, Heirloom Productions, which became one of the biggest um, stamp convention uh, coordinators, entities, or whatnot, they added, I don't know, maybe two or three times as many shows as this. But they were doing San Mateo, um, which is in the Bay Area, California, Puyallup, Washington. They were doing the Boston show here. Uh, that Boston, it changed, I think it changed from Boston, Massachusetts to West Springfield, Massachusetts. I don't think they kept Boston and West Springfield. Okay, so I never did the Boston show, but we used to do the, uh, the West Springfield show. And then here was the Oregon show in Portland, Oregon. And I did that show once, but it was more law in the 2000s, I would say 2000 and five maybe or something like that 2004 or five i did that show um and then the del mar show i, I didn't do uh, these shows all the time though okay san mateo show i re used to really like that one but i was doing the san jose show and san jose and san mateo are really close together and there were two san jose shows i think so yeah, i don't you, you don't want to do just too many in any given area but um, always really great um, shows to do and really great co coordinators. Um, I don't know. Uh, they have just retired this year, I think. So I don't know who's taken over some of the shows that still existed on their um, lineup. I know the Grapevine um, Texas show was still on schedule twice a year or something like that. I'd imagine some other entity probably is... Um, probably bought them out or something, bought out their mailing list and uh, took it over. But I'm not really quite sure. Brings back a lot of memories doing those shows. I don't know. Did you go to any of those heirloom shows out there? You might not even know the entity. You just know that that was the stamp convention, but you don't, might not have known, you know, the different coordinator for it or whatnot. Impressive Impressions. They used to carry um, stampscapes quite a bit. Um, they had their own line of stamps, too, apparently. And let's see, rubber-itis, a case study. What is this? Rubber, what is rubber-itis? I mean, that's, they're just joking around or whatever. Maybe they're addicted to rubber or something like that or something like that. Uh, or maybe not. The symptoms of rubber-itis are easily discernible. First, it turns the patient's fingernails all colors of the rainbow. Okay, so... We get inky fingers. I guess that's part of rubberitis. So I guess I have that. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is just a you know a funny little thing right here. Um, let's see, collage with rubber stamps. Uh, collage became kind of a big um, kind of style or wave in terms of what people were doing with their stamps at one point in time. I'm guessing it's '95. I thought it was later, but I guess that's it. Well, we can see these different types of uh, uh, usages of... I don't think... I don't, these ones don't look like stamps to me right here. This looks like um, cutouts or something like that. Maybe stamps were incorporated in this piece right here, but I can't really tell. Certainly this one right here. And I think that was a Stamp of Barbara piece right there. So, I don't know. People are doing, you know, various types of things. And, uh, you know, back in those days, you know, a lot of these different types of things that would come out, these new kind of waves of um, kind of usages of uh, stamps and whatnot, you know, that was cutting edge back in the day. And it was easy to be, you know, somewhat cutting edge because, you know, even though stamping had been, you know, people were doing it, I don't know, some people would say even in the 70s, but really more so uh, kind of in the latter part of the 80s to early 90s. That's when things really started um, kind of picking up steam with um, a lot of different um, ent companies and uh, publications like this, stores, conventions, etc. And uh, after that kind of got established, then you started seeing more types of accessories starting to become available. But you know, how to use your stamps and whatnot. I know you saw new different types of uh, usages all the time. Um, so more collage here. Yeah, the incorporation of certain types of things. It looks like some of these things are just like photographs and uh, cutouts and whatnot. I see some Ken Brown stamps in here from Rubber Stamps of America, I believe. Used to see his stamps all the time. 
Um, I looked him up, Ken Brown, if you know that name. Um, he did these kind of funky kind of retro types of uh, 50s types of uh, imagery. Um, some of his stuff, I think, was in uh, Sesame Street back in the uh, um, 70s with stop motion little animations and whatnot. But he's still out there. I, I found him online a couple years ago, and I wrote um, kind of an email to him. You know, just, you know, saying, hey, you know, I always liked your stuff and, you know, your stamping, you know, imagery and whatnot. There's always, I don't know, really cool. I don't know. What, I don't remember what I said, but uh, he, he wrote back a little bit later. Um, I didn't know anything about him, uh, you know, doing the research on him, but more collage, a lot more collage, you know, so that was, you know, definitely something that was going on there. Um, the Chicago Rubber Stamp Expo. Interesting. Um... Why are you doing a Chicago exposition, a pressing matter? Because California, <laughs> yeah, check this out. Because California is out of reach for many interested stampers and retailers. Uh, or because California is out of reach, you know, for many interested uh, stampers and retailers, we decided to bring California to the Midwest, so to speak. It's time to broaden the stamping horizon and locate our would-be stampers they would be stampers if they only knew about the stamping world around them. It's a pressing matter. Um, so, I don't know, someone did a... Uh, oh, um, Sandra Korn and Mary Allegretti. Um, I guess they created a, a rubber stamping show there. I thought the first convention in the Midwest was um, the Cincinnati show. Um, I'm trying to remember the first year that happened, but uh, I don't know. Maybe there was something in Chicago at the time or something of that, that source. I, I believe there was another convention um, in New York in the 80s, but it was I don't think it was a yearly type of thing. It could have been, but I, I don't think it was. Um, okay, so anyways, uh, look at this here in this magazine right here. The National Stamper Graphic. Happy Birthday Club. So you can see, <laughs> people, you submit your name and address and your birthday, and maybe people on here might just send birthday cards to um, each other, you know, instead of having kind of a, a pen pal type of thing. You got the Birthday Club here. That's kind of interesting. Um, let's see, how to sell rubber stamps, how to sell rubber stamps by National Stamper Graphic, that's interesting. I don't know if they, uh, had, I don't know if they sold stamps as well, maybe they did. Here's a pen pal listing, um, type of thing in the back here, okay. I think I actually recognize some of these names on this, uh, um, listing here. I don't know, maybe they just sound familiar to me. Um, Stamp Fest Orlando. Oh, okay, they started at that time. I did the uh, one of the conventions in Orlando, too. I don't know if I did the inaugural one or not. If it was 1996, gosh, did I get down there? I might have gotten down there. I don't know what not. What I would do is I would try to... I would pick and choose... Um, conventions to go to. If there were just, if I had way too many retailers in a given area, I didn't need to go there, okay? I was trying to kind of promote Stampscapes for um, the retailers that would be carrying the stamps in a given area, okay? Um, and I would, I don't know, typically bring like a postcard or something like that and with the names of the stores that were carrying Stampscape stamps. So outside of the convention, they can go to those stores. You know, in the other times of the year or whatnot, or if there weren't stores that carried Stampscape stamps and there was a convention in the general vicinity, I would try to go down there to um, kind of stir up some interest in the, uh, in the line and whatnot. But anyways, uh, went down there, I think, twice. It was, I think that was the first time I had ever been to um, Florida. And yeah, it was a June, so I remember I remember the humidity of I don't know, one of those shows that we were at. Okay, here you go. Uh, stamp legally. Get your official license to stamp. This is just a joke thing, so 
license to stamp, date expires, date of birth, sex, height, eyes, hair, name, address, war what does it say? Warning issued only for the use of the above named stamper. Intentional misuse of this card is unlawful and will make the offender liable to penalty. <laughs> so you can send in a dollar ninety five um, uh, and you have to add sales tax in New York and California and a self addressed stamped envelope thirty two for cents was the uh um first class postage at the time. Oh, and there's actually a right and left thumbprint at the time, so I all right. If anyone ever watches this, if you got this, like we want to know about it in the comments section. Um, I don't know, kind of interesting here. Oh, so classified um, right here, brass stencil catalog. So brass stencils were kind of going at that time. That's pretty early in the uh, stamping world. I don't know, I, maybe it's uh, you know going like that. See, eraser carving swap, send five hand card postcards. Um, plus one dollar get back get five back so cool things like that happening museum of modern rubber sometimes you'd see some classifieds with uh you know uh someone was a, a stampscapes uh user uh not necessarily in rubber national stamp or graphic but in some of the magazines so they'd have like a stampscape swap or something like that uh, which is always cool to see um continues classifieds right here um, anyway, uh, stores right here, uh, this is, these are the different types of stores that were, or these were the stores that were carrying, uh, National Stamp or Graphic, you know, to buy off the stand. I recognize so many of these stores. Uh, so many of them are gone, if not all of them, but, um, some of these I actually taught workshops at Stampadoodle in Bellingham, Washington, Treasure K. And um, this is Palm Harbor, Florida. Did they tr did they move? I'm not quite sure. Stampa Rosa taught there. Remember the House Mouse type of thing? I think that was I taught there before House Mouse when they were doing House Mouse. They you know they didn't need anyone coming in and teaching at the store. I don't know. They might have even closed the store. Toad Hall right here in Anaheim. That's where I really started teaching a lot of classes when I started um, Stampscapes. Always loved uh, Toad Hall and uh, Terry's store there, so always a really great place to uh, teach at. And plus, it was kind of right up the street from me. I don't know, about a half an hour, but it was, you know, it was way up there, but it was right up Beach Boulevard. Always enjoyed doing that. Teaching at these different stores out there um, was always one of the most fun things to do. Um, especially once I got there. I didn't like the logistics and travel and all that, getting to some place and... Uh, shipping things ahead if it was out of state and whatnot but always good times with stamping with other people meeting other stampers and whatnot stampographic volume 14 number one fall 1995 a little trip back through uh, memory lane okay so anyways hope you enjoyed this little um uh show and tell and if you remember National Stamper Graphic, and <laughs> if you have that license to stamp, we want to know about it wherever it went, you know, something like that. It's kind of cool. All right. Thanks for watching.